Yep, so you have the 45 too? Yep, coming around just a moment. All right. Okay, we're going to call this meeting to order. All right. First thing on the agenda is to approve the minutes for the 318 meeting. Uh, I have a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes for the um, March 18 meeting, 24. Second. Okay. Jay seconded it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Now we get the proposed sign for 36 Milford Street. Uh, the engineer is on line, Dave. Here he is. Can I um, want me to share my screen real quick? It's just we the already have that... it up. We oh, great. It. OK, so it's, I mean, I think it's pretty straightforward as part of our final package for approval. We included um, sort of a, a standard typical sign that they would have. So it's this two foot by five foot um, monument sign that goes out you know, towards the road. Um, originally, they were anticipating potentially just doing, you know, the gooseneck shine down lights on it. Um, and then as they um, as they advance the design and actually engage the lighting designer, same exact um, signage uh, dimensions and all that. And if you scroll down, it's really just instead of the goosenecks, it's just internally lit. They felt that would have actually a softer glow to it that might be less intrusive, um, you know, to any neighbors or from the visuals from the road. So just a, a clearer view of the, the sign. So we're really looking for same signage and everything, same location, just flopping, flipping out the the lighting intent of it from a external pointing of lights to an internal glow. Okay. How bright is that going to be? It's going to be just a. Yeah, they said it's you know pretty minimal. Just they, they what they told me was a soft glow. Um, okay. Is it going to be on a timer? Yeah, is it going to be on a timer also? I can confirm that. Um, they didn't give me that specific. Yeah, obviously we want to be, uh, you know, cautious of the neighbors. We have enough lights in that district that uh, yeah, lighting up the residential area. So. So you, I mean, ideally you would like it if it's. If, when they're not open or at a certain time at night, that there'd be some restrictions on the timing of it. Yeah, like if what are the business can, hours? What's that? What are the business hours? What are the business hours? It's around the clock, right? Twenty-four hours. Yeah, I guess they get access. Um, I'm, I'm writing to the client now to <laughs> to see if they can give me well, that information. So the buildings will be lit, right? Yeah, that's it. The buildings will be lit all the time. The buildings are lit all the time. I presume. Yeah, he had showed us that soft glow. So, um, I think they were. We yeah, talked about that. Like... I mean, I, what we could do with the condition on uh, the lighting is we could see how soft it is. And if it's not obtrusive, um, you know, we did a 24 hour thing wouldn't be a big deal. No, not a photo. As long as they make it soft enough. Okay. All right. So all right yeah, they did. They just let me know. Yeah, it would. The the building lights and the signage light would be on all night. So all right. I think I, I think it's good just to to follow up, and then we can adjust the lighting as needed. Yeah, just so we want to make sure we're not uh, affecting the neighbors. This is a, we got other light issues in that district. That yeah, we got to address, but. Um, it uh, it would be great if it wasn't a, a extremely bright glow. So this was a condition of your approval that right. they come in. Right. All right. And you guys have any other questions? The size seems fine. The appearance looks good. Good. Um, does uh, the community have any questions? So a vote that they met the condition. Yep. Yeah. yeah, that's it. So we need a motion uh, that they met the conditions of the. I'll make, it I'll make a motion that the sign has been approved as designed, um, with the exception of the. What do you want to call it? The luminescence. Condition of the yeah, just the condition of the lighting. Brightness. Of, brightness of the lighting. 
to be addressed at a future date. Second. All those in favor? All right. The rest. Okay. Thanks, Dave. All right, Thanks, great. Dave. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Bye. Um. Okay. Now. Yeah. Um. Yeah. In the. Three five thirty seven. Is Damon online or? I don't see him. Okay. We're going to move on to the continuation of the public hearing uh, special permit site plan review for 3537 Hastings. Mr. Chair, can I? I'll just update the board. I know you got a slew of emails today. There's, we got a slew of emails today. And matter of fact, you got one as soon as I got here. Um, I know Jeff's going to talk about his second review on the uh, project. Um, we did receive a review from the Board of Health, which you got today, and John got today. Um, we just received the traffic report from our peer reviewer. He is on to talk about it. Okay. John, I sent that to you as soon as I got it. Just wasn't Probably was on the way here. That's how. Um, and um, so we, you know. Done. So after Jeff goes through his, I think you'll find that civil is satisfied. We'll just need them to respond to the Board of Health and to um, traffic and the cat sign. Okay. How you doing, Dave? All right. How are you doing, Dave? Go ahead. Why not? That's great. Uh, sorry, guys. Yep. What we need is more paper. Yeah. If you don't want me to print them next time, I'll have to. There's two full sides of the dog. We just need John was the one that was printed them. Right now. Okay. Thanks, Jeff. Oh, you put them all in. Uh, they're not. They're not collated like. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> we're both here. What are these? What are these two? Oh, imagine that. Those are all the exhibits. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, you can give all this over to Jack. I don't get it. Sorry. Yeah. 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 All right, we're going to uh, start with uh, a town uh, civil representative, uh, Jeff Walsh, from Graves Engineering, um, to receive the report and so the entire board did. Um, anything, I, I see you have a, one concern about uh, additional parking. Um, Looks like everything else has been addressed. <laughs> Additional parking. Additional parking. Um, actually, I didn't see that. No, nope. maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. No. Uh, good that evening, everybody. Um, oh, okay. No, no, he been acknowledged. Okay, and the one I looked at, it wasn't. Potential future parking airplane was provided. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, for the record, my name is Jeff Walsh. I'm with Graves Engineering, the civil engineering peer review consultant for the planning board. Um, but just under a week ago, uh, we received revised documents to address comments in the letter that we issued back in uh, uh, March 21st, so not that long ago. Nevertheless, um, we went through the revised materials. We issued a letter just today, came out this morning by email. 
Um, and with Gail's absence, um, we're just able to get the copies to the members, I understand, in paper form. But anyways, um, with respect to I, I, our scope of work was to review for general civil engineering on the site, review for compliance with the technical issues associated with the compliance with the zoning bylaw, review the stormwater management um, and drainage designs in compliance with the Mass DEP stormwater handbook and standards. Um, this is a, a peer review on behalf of the of the planning board. Um, we have no problem if you share our comments with the Conservation Commission. Um, with respect to my earlier comments, uh, one of them uh, to your point, Mr. Chairman, about parking um, in the revised documents, they allocated space for what was commonly called reserve parking. Um, the reserve parking was not included, or the impervious area associated with it was not included in the hydrology report. But nevertheless, I backed out of their hydrology report. What if some grass was replaced with impervious? And, and it's my opinion that if you were to ask for revised hydrology computations, it'd be such an insignificant um, change that um, I don't think revisiting that would, would, would be having meaningful um, impact on this on, on the board's decision. Um, so that's why I didn't I didn't push that issue any further. But with respect to allocation of space, I'm fine with with where they propose the, the extra parking um, to add enough parking to meet the zoning bylaw. Um, we didn't really have many comments whatsoever. One thing that I would like to speak of in just a moment, and I know you have a traffic peer reviewer, is that uh, they submitted turning templates and on the uh, easternmost site entrance, if you if somebody were on um, uh, Route 16 and turning right into the project, if a truck were turning on, the turning template shows the truck going onto the island. I assume that the intention is to have a mountable traffic island so that uh, truck traffic can go over it, but yet it'll, it'll cause cars to the drivers most anyways to want to stay into the passenger travel lane. It's not unlike the uh, shoulder you see around the small rotaries mass DOT is doing. Anyways, it looks like they're intending to have a mountable island, but I couldn't find enough information that when I look at the plans in the eyes of being a contractor, does it tell me use mountable materials, what specific materials, heights, things like that? And that's comment number 11. Okay, so this little island you're talking about here, Yep. You have a concern of that. Oh, I just want to make sure that the, just that it's the, written, that's the written. plans are clear to the contractor of of the my assume my assumption that they're intending to have a mountable island. In other words, if it's vertical granite curb, that's not mountable. If that's the intention, then sloped with asphalt or something on the sure. on the uh, not and not shrubbery and landscaping on yeah. signs and so forth. Yes. largest truck that occasionally will enter the site and will drive over it, but the other vehicles the intention is to keep them in it. Just make sure it's noted on the plan. Yeah, that's yeah. what Jeff's looking for, I think, right? Yep. Yeah, we can ask him to label it just call it. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Chairman, everything else I was comfortable with the revisions. Sure. I'm assuming it's not an issue because it's an extension of an existing lot. And there's a dotted line there. I don't know if that's the setback or not, but it's right on it. Yeah, yeah that's that's the the building setback on. Yeah. And I'm not. Not, not a parking, parking setback. Not the parking, yeah. And I'm double checking the parking regulations to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 My recollection is 10 feet. I think it's 10 feet, yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. I presume that's greater than that. Yeah. Best my recollection, it was. <laughs> Okay. 
um, if you have anything further to add. I have nothing else. Uh, no, really all I wanted to do tonight was run through some key updates to the plan, the response to the ones, and some of the feedback we got from both the board and the Conservation Commission to date, as well as some of the public. So just take a couple of minutes to run through those on the plan here. Um, we've incorporated some additional perimeter screening into the project. We've added some evergreen trees between the soil absorption system and the woodland path to help the screening from Washington Street. We've added additional fence line at 24 Washington Street. Mm -hmm. Uh, we've done a continuation of the proposed screening fence are all the way around 16 on the on our property side of the boundary. Also a mix of evergreen and deciduous trees behind 31 and 33 Hastings Street, just to give a little bit more screening to the direct abutters. We've adjusted the footprint of the flow absorption system, basically pull this portion that was coming straight across a little bit further away from 16. The system in its entirety is still well beyond the required setbacks in Title V, but that gives a little bit additional screening here for 16 and, and pulls the system a little bit further away from the slot as well. On the public water supply side of things, uh, what we did was we pulled the storage tank, the well pump house, the drive, all outside of the 100 foot buffer zone uh, to, to minimize any disturbance. Approximate to the resource areas, the wells location has not changed, but we've minimized the gravel required to get down to the two wells. We've also relocated the woodland path outside that 100 foot buffer. Uh, those changes are in direct response to some dialogue with the commission. Uh, aside from that, some minor stormwater updates to the infiltration basin and those components in response to, to Jeff's comments. And otherwise, we're here to answer any questions or comments or take any comments from the board and the public. You guys have any other further questions? As long as Jeff's okay with the, everything, I think we addressed. Hi, right, um, the traffic uh, is here, Bob. Good. Yes, hello. Um, Bob Michaud, uh, MDM Transportation oh. Consultants. Uh, good evening. Uh, I forwarded to Jack uh, the outcome of our transportation peer review. Um, it's, in summary, a pretty clean review. Uh, we, we find that the submitted materials we're prepared uh, to a good engineering standard and practice. Um, there were really a couple of areas that we focused our commentary on. Uh, one of them was parking. Uh, we didn't see that there was supporting um, analysis to, to uh, confirm that the proposed parking supply, which falls below the zoning, uh, typical zoning requirement, uh, is going to be sufficient to support the use. We're not suggesting that it won't. We just would suggest that there be some analysis provided that would support better uh, the notion of having uh, the the parking supply at uh, just over I think it's 148 parking spaces. Um, just as a point of reference, um, we looked at ITE parking generation, uh, the latest available edition, and applied it to just the supermarket component of the project to learn where we would land for what what's known as 85th percentile parking demand and that number uh is about 140 parking spaces for the supermarket alone uh that does not include the uh, the retail component at the salon the commercial piece at the salon so um we, we think um you know that that uh calculation or some uh some basis for parking supply should be provided to the board I will point out that my principal concern with parking would be the area annotated as snow storage. Uh, there's some 13 parking spaces located to the northeast uh, portion of the parking area that are designated for that potential use. Um, that would certainly, uh, under wintertime conditions, put a little bit of stress, potential stress on the parking supply. And uh, we'd want to uh, simply underscore the importance of making sure that the parking supply is retained uh, to the extent possible at that 148 spaces, perhaps even having uh, reserve spaces identified somewhere on the plan to the extent that um, actual practice de uh, demonstrates the need. So that's one of our principal co uh, comments. The other had to do with site circulation. I think uh, Grace had pointed out that there was, in fact, a uh, 
a swept path analysis that appears to have been submitted. I have not seen that, but uh, our request was to provide that to dem demonstrate the ability for uh, service vehicles and emergency apparatus to properly turn into and circulate within the property. Uh, I would be glad to uh, take a look at those uh, submitted materials to uh, ensure that they're they're meeting that standard. Although I haven't had had a chance to to actually review them formally. Um, beyond that, um, you know, we've been involved with review of this property uh, in 2022 as well. We're well aware that uh, Mass DOT is undergoing a rather significant improvement program along Route 16. The applicant is appropriately coordinated with DOT to ensure that their proposed improvements, namely a signal at the front door, are being designed in a way that's compatible with that uh, program. Uh, we've looked at, in detail at the analysis results of what they're proposing to do at the front door and find that it adequately supports the proposed use. Uh, any delays uh, that would be uh, occurring during peak hours would really be focused on the driveway itself. Um, but the driveway is designed in a way that will properly accommodate um, queuing and operations for the for the site um, under peak hour conditions. Um, that is it in a nutshell. I'd be glad to answer any specific questions that the board might have uh, as it relates to uh, transportation. So you you. Uh... So did you, did you have a concern about the, the number of parking spaces? Well, <clears throat> um, it's not uncommon for commercial properties to have parking supply that, that falls below a zoning standard. Um, but when that occurs, there's uh, usually an analysis that would support uh, the number of spaces that are being proposed. And one of the ways to do that analysis is to look at industry standard um, parking generation rates by land use type uh, to see where average and peak demands might land uh, at full occupancy. Uh, it, it, I've, I've done a preliminary version of that just to understand whether or not 148 parking spaces would reasonably support what they're proposing to do, at least on the commercial side. And, and those initial results indicate that uh, if you take the 36,500 square feet of supermarket use, and that includes the outdoor retail component, and apply those industry standard rates, that the peak parking demands that would be created uh, land at about 140 parking spaces. Um, when I view the plan and see that there's um, a proposed snow storage area, that would essentially rely on 13 of those 148 spaces, it raises some concern that uh, A, we're hitting the, you know, the ceiling of peak demand based on the industry standard, and we're starting to chip away from that supply, the effective supply by assigning certain number of those spaces for wintertime snow storage area, right? So I, it's simply, a, it's a concern that I am pointing out to the board that just needs to be better supported by, by analysis. So the only time that, that you'd be concerned about it would be during snow storage. Um, yeah, I mean, I look at I. We've got a lot of experience like, with. It sounds like they meet the zoning if they're not allotting those. No, they don't. They don't meet it, but it's satisfies Bob. Oh, well, we got a, a hundred and forty. Well, they had 148 spaces. I thought it required 140. Oh, yeah. well, 160. Yeah. Oh, 160. Okay. Yeah, if I may, the, the 148 was specifically selected to meet the anticipated demand. Okay. The basis for that was to utilize the smart parking model bylaw that the state's released, which okay. recommends three spaces per thousand. So the state requirements would require a minimum of 124 spaces and a maximum of 166. Okay. We propose 148 to meet that minimum and then provide a 24 space buffer. Okay. To, to, for the anticipated demand. Yeah, because I, I I thought that the smart uh, was far less than what we had originally proposed. When we originally proposed that that parking bylaw several years ago. 
uh, the state analysis was greatly different at that time than, than the changes that have come down in the last couple of years. Yeah, as a culture, we've we yeah. put in way too many parking spaces. Yeah, I mean, well, that's that's what we're more places. concerned about now is aqueous surface instead of, you know, they're shrinking everything, less pavement. Yeah. Um, so, but we would need that in the waiver request. Uh, yeah, the waiver request is in the okay. narrative. Yeah, so we requested a waiver for the minimum number of parking spaces, uh, which is allowed. Uh, and there is, so we're requesting an 11% reduction. Okay. Yeah. Can I ask the applicant a question? Sure. John, you, you're, you own a couple grocery stores, right? Yes, we do. A any reflection on parking? And the stores aren't that. That crazy busy. Um, we have, have no parking problems at any of the parking shops that we currently have. I could give you actual customer comments to go by the customer. I, 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 you know, are you, customer per day. are you having a problem? Is all I no, 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 never had a problem in any of the stores. Yeah. No, and, and like I said, there's more concern on aqueous surface today than there is. But so, that would also be based on the size of the lots. If they are oversized to begin with, then you wouldn't have a problem. Right. True. But I could give you. I could get customer counts per day. That would help. I mean, at the, at the end of the day, if there's an issue with the 13 parking spaces, if then during snow events, they can re, they can yeah. have a stipulation where they have to re remove all snow out of the. You know, if those 13 spaces are causing a problem. They have any snow event. They remove the snow off site. You know, so you wouldn't call snow storage if that became a problem. If I may add one, one item that maybe satisfy the snow issue. All right, so we've got 13 spaces dedicated for snow storage. We have 8,500 square feet of outdoor retail. The outdoor retail is not going to be substantially busy, right? If busy at all during the months where we have snow. snow. Yeah. But you're offset. You know, you're losing 13 spaces, but you're also not utilizing the full benefit of the 8,500 square feet of outdoor retail. Right. All That's right. more of a summer. Bill. Yep. Yep. Are you required to have six spaces for EV charging? You could pick up some space. Yeah. Typically, in our bylaws, I guess. Well, the new state building code requires, I believe, a minimum of one for a commercial project. We've proposed in excess of that. Six is my recollection. There's six on the plan. Yeah, six. Yeah. So, if, why have sex? You don't need them. <laughs> well, electric vehicles are becoming more. Other cars aren't going to be able to park there. They are cars. Are that many? You I, I, yeah, I don't. Uh, or either way, I mean, I think we need to be charged. I think, I think, I, yeah. I think, I think, 148 spaces would. We'll go shop probably uh, manage the traffic in my department. Um, I'm going to go to the community right now. So, hi, I'm Dennis Lance at the Team Cat Road. Is there any consideration for visitors and guests to the housing units as to where they're supposed to park? Um, given the weekends, you know, when you expect a number of visitors into that neighborhood. Um, which could also be the peak period for the retail. Where would visitors, you know, children, grandchildren, whatever, where would they park? How far would they have to walk? Is there available space to park for visitors to the housing unit? I can answer that one. Yeah, so each of these housing units has a garage. They also have a driveway. So we've dedicated a minimum of two spaces per unit. There's also a 24 foot wide circulation loop road. So let's say you're having a birthday party, right? Not unlike any other subdivision, you have some cars in your driveway, you have some cars along the edge of the road. So it's it's designed in a manner as as any other subdivision road would be, but for a paid restricted use. I didn't see a question. Yes. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? Okay. Um so it seems like we need just a couple responses to the traffic study. Yeah, I think we need to hear from emergency fire. I haven't heard a peep from them. They got uh -huh. everything. Changing other guy. Have, uh, have you uh, 
That's true. Robert, have you spoken to uh, the fire or emergency uh, regarding the traffic? I, I I have not. Um, our our standard review would would usually rely on the swept path analysis to confirm that um, they're using the appropriate design vehicle uh, for the town uh, or under a mutual aid uh, uh, process, you know, making sure that the, the appropriate design vehicle has been accounted for. Um, so I, I, I could certainly um, reach out to fire to, to get some input from them, but I, I want to see that swept path analysis first so that I could confer with the fire department that a, you know, they are in fact using the correct vehicle and B, there may be some other aspects of circulation that are particular to the department that they'd like to see. I can email both chiefs. Who is the new have chief? You, have you spoken? Started? Yeah. Yeah, you started. We have not spoken with the new chief. Okay. The, the cistern sizing and general locations are based on Bill. prior discussion with the old chief and we've run the swept path analysis for the, the truck you have given us at the time. It was submitted in, in our response to Jeff's comment letter. Mm -hmm. So we ran the largest delivery truck and the largest fire. You're going to give us to Bob too? Yeah, yeah, I'll pass yeah. along to Bob. Yep. Thank you. And then um, we'll wait for John Nenich. Uh, Jeff, what was your feeling on the swept pass path analysis? Did you take a look at that? I didn't look at it very much knowing that there was a traffic peer reviewer, but I okay. did pick up on that island issue that we talked about earlier. Okay. Um, all right, so we got the swift pass analysis. <clears throat> and we'll need the applicant's response to the Board of Health's letter. Yeah. I think we have the Board of Health here too. We need anything. We have one. Do you have any comments from the Board of Health? Yep. letter along with the uh, recommendations and uh, we'll say concerns, but the, some of the questions that our engineer had about a couple of certain aspects of the project. But you know, time to probably digest and for John to digest and yep. take a look and yeah, you. I didn't even see him yet. I was yeah, not in the office all day and they said it came. Yeah. Okay, that's something that you will yeah, address with them. Sense. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, the Board of Health uh, doesn't reflect on decision of So We did ask for some comments, I yeah. think, right? That's why we were the, right? Yeah, it's all in the process. Yes. We have conservation here, I see. Yeah, I was going to say, there's conservation while we have you here. <laughs> For the water, it has to be bigger. Um, or a capacity for water because it is. Uh, Isabella, I, I'm not able to hear Isabella. Could you repeat that in the microphone, please? So you're going to have to come on. Oh, yeah. uh, I think the two concerns I still have are that the wells are in the bordering land subject to flooding. So if there's been any consideration to additional storage capacity for the well, um, and then I still the uh, grade for the infiltration basin does enter the 50 foot buffer zone. Um, and so I think the commission should request that that gets moved out. Uh, but that's the two, because I saw all the changes that you've made, moving the woodland path out and the gravel road out. Another thing that would be a... When you're asking about the boring on some are you talking about compensatory storage? No, I'm talking about storage for the wells themselves, um, the storage and the the uh, storage tank? Yeah. yeah. The storage tank is located well outside of bordering land, so just the size of that tank is based on the withdrawal rate for the well and the what mass DEP requires for yeah. safety storage. So within 72 hours, mm -hmm. storage, so 36 gallons of storage provided in that storage tank. And that's all going to be worked out through the permanent process for the water source with DEP. In terms of the 50 foot back, 
from the buffer zone for the infiltration basin. That, that, com that currently complies with the stormwater handbook regulations. The infiltration area is more than 50 feet beyond the wetland. The slope tying back down, yes, it's within 50 feet, but it's not the infiltration area. Any other questions? Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may, um, what I was hearing of concern brought by Mass DEP with respect to the wells back in 2022 was the location of the wells being in the in the bordering lands subject to flooding or the 100 year floodplain. And the concern with that is, is you don't want a well um, sitting in flood water. You want the base of the well out of flood water. And I don't know what's proposed on this set of plans because the public water supply is with DEP and conservation permitting is with the Conservation Commission. But there was a apples and oranges discussion about, in my opinion, about what DEP brought up as a concern in 2022. And it's my opinion that that concern was probably the location of the wells themselves being drilled in the floodplain. It had nothing to do with the storage of water. Or, unless they were proposing storage of water within the floodplain, which I understand they are not now. Uh, I, 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 I'm not sure this is the DEP comment that you guys are referring to. I think it's the peer reviewer from the prior submission. Uh, DEP has reviewed and approved the location of these wells and the pumping test that we intend to run on this location. There's a requirement when the wells are in board and subject to flooding that the top of the, the well casting is a minimum of two feet above the floodplain elevation. So we'll have to comply with that requirement when these wells are installed. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> All right. So we got a couple open items. Uh, that we need to resolve. Uh, mostly the uh, you've got to finish up the traffic. Uh, and I think that's about it, correct? Just traffic for it. Yeah, we'll we'll review the board of health yeah. letter. We'll review the traffic letter from Bob and his team and provide responses to the yes. All right, so it looks like at this point we'll have to continue the meeting. Mm -hmm. Next meeting is May 6th, if that's enough time. Back here, May 6th is two weeks from today. And Mr. Four weeks from that. Four weeks from that. Well, hopefully, let's try and get all these loose ends tied up. Yeah. So we can uh, get this matter resolved one way or the other. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> Because we got to provide Bob with a couple of additional pieces of information, give him an opportunity to look at that. Let's make sure we respond to Board of Health. Yeah. I mean, if we uh, Barry won't be here on the twenty first, do we want to make the twentieth? Twentieth? Yeah, I won't be here. We need Barry, and here's why: because John will no longer be sitting on the board. Right. Barry's going to be here. And we need. Oh. Okay. Um, well, no. Yeah. And do it the week before. Instead of all of the three weeks, that work. I can do three weeks. I can't do it three weeks. Are you sure somebody reserves one, please, Jay? So May thirteen. May. Okay. I'll make a motion to continue thirty-five, thirty-seven Hastings Street to thirteenth. Yep. May thirteenth at six p.m. Test results that had to do with the um, bird testing. Yeah, its perspective on those results and the perspective of the soil evaluations as well. Just so that's yeah. The bottom line is I don't want to hold up a decision. Uh, the, the board has has a time to react, um, and whether we approve it or not, they still have to meet water health regulations. So even if we approve it, doesn't mean it can be built. So also going to ask the board to also ask help over that meeting if he would want out with a health engineer to be if he'd like to show up it'd, it'd be great i mean if we can get this all wrapped up at the next meetings i'd appreciate it um 
And just so the board knows, we did original testing out there, and then the Board of Health, uh, Joyce from the Board of Health, said she she wanted to witness herself after the yeah. um, town's um, engine, you know, engineer or consultant witnessed it. So we redid testing a second time. So you've tested twice. We've tested twice. And both times time. came up. It came up okay. Yes. So the second time was Joyce was present at every single. Time. Okay. And then they, okay. If somebody gets approved at planning, every other board or commission, they still have to get those approvals on their own. So we can't hold up a decision at planning or uh, the other com committees. Um, so, but your input at the next meeting would be great. Thanks, Bo. Uh, yeah, okay. well, well, I, I have made it. The motion on the table. Most second the table and waiting for a second. Okay. All those in favor. All right. Um, next meeting will be May 13th. May 13th. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Of course. Thank you. Thank you. What's, what's yeah, next? Appreciate that. Thank you. What's next on the agenda? There's two uh, hearings for. Oh, yeah. Public hearing for citizen by Eric Hodge. Come on up, Eric. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, this presentation will actually be being done by uh, my attorney, uh, Mark Lanz, as you're online. Sure. I just wanted to make sure it all got done right. <laughs> yeah, no problem. I don't blame you. Why, why not? Why not I do mean, it once, not twice? Right? It. Right. it looks pretty straightforward, so I'd like to. Uh, Muted at the moment. Oh. oh, there he comes. There we go. Oh, you're muted. Mark, you have to unmute yourself. Okay, my audible will now. There you go. There you go. Okay, uh, my name is Mark Lanza. Um, I'm an attorney. I specialize in land use, zoning, and uh, real estate law. Um, I also work in with your your audio is broken up. We can't hear you. Okay, let me let me uh, bring the speaker closer. Microphone, I should say. Um, how about now? It's still broken up. Okay. I'll do my best here. Oh, oh. Maybe go up video, Mark, if that's okay. And, and audio. Somebody okay. increase your bandwidth. Can I turn the camera off? That'll help. Possibly. I just did. Did it help? No, not any better, Mark. Eric's Do you want Eric's doing it? <laughs> Mark, do you want to just call in using the uh, audio bridge? I can try that. Okay. okay what number do? Let me see if I can. Bill, while they're doing, while they're doing that. Do you need me for anything else tonight? Uh, let me just take a look at the uh, agenda. No. You don't mind? I'm going to disappear. Good night, Joe. Good night, Good guys. Night. Well, we do mind if you disappear. Be on the 13th. Okay. Well, thanks, Compton. You're welcome. Thank you, guys. Looks like you're going to have a little problem. Why don't we go over your project and then if he has input, maybe you can get him on a cell call or something. Sure. Uh, actually, I could probably just call him directly now. If I'm honest, I don't have anything specific to this marriage. Yeah. Did you do the sign thing? I, I, I mean, I read your petition. Um, other than the fact that it, it's, a, it's a zoning map change. Um, Really requires a public hearing. Your call has been. That's all done. Oh, is it open? So we just don't deal with Are you on the line now? I'm on the line now, and I wonder if I should uh, exit the uh, video. Uh, we can hear you fine right now. I think that's, that's okay. Okay. I'll, I'll keep it. I'll keep it like this, and hopefully, there's no feedback. What? Do you have the notice for the public hearing? Or probably.
It's public. This is a public hearing. Oh, this is a public hearing. Yeah. Yeah. So I think uh, you got to read the note. Hold on. Until oh. has announced. No, because you know what? Well, okay, see, Gail's not here. Gail's not here. Gail's not here. Jack doesn't fight. I've got it. Hi. Give me the notice, please. I, I keep on the up and up. If <laughs> you would say that. Got an empty bag of Twizzlers. That's not helping us. Much. That was my dinner. No, go ahead. I'm supposed to share with everybody else. There weren't enough. All right. Let's, uh, let's do this right. Let's do this right now. Yeah, right. Both public hearings are in that public hearing. I see that a pick one. So I'm going to uh, let me just make sure we can come citizen to pick one. So we're gonna uh, you know, just okay. open the public hearing uh, for the citizens' petition by Eric Hodge for the zoning map change. Notice is here by giving this amendment planning board will hold a public hearing on April 22nd, 2024, 6 p.m. in the amendment town hall. To discuss the proposed zoning map amendment received through a citizen's petition to change zoning district of 3 Beach Street, parcel 14106-3-0, from rural highway business to rural residential, to be voted on at the annual town meeting. Uh, this was in the Daily News on 4, 5, and 4, 12. Head back to deck, please. Thank you. I think that goes in the file. You're going to have to read it again. Right. So the public hearing is now open. Um, I'll uh, let your uh, attorney take over and then uh, we'll see if the board has any questions. Okay. Oh. I'm on the uh, phone now. This is Attorney Mark So Can I be heard loud and clear? Yep. 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 Okay. Um, I heard a member start out by saying it looks pretty straightforward. It, it really is. As far as zoning changes go, um, this one's pretty straightforward. Um, the zoning map shows uh, the Hodges property as being within the highway business zoning district. This came to light recently. Um, as we all know, zoning maps are not uh, engineered plans. And sometimes there can be issues about boundaries uh, as shown on the map versus as shown on a, on a surveyed plan. Um, in this case, we have three different surveyed plans showing the zoning district line between RR and HB in two different places. One map, and we, which we all have attached to the uh, petition, shows it as completely within highway business. Another one says uh, approximate line of the district, and another one shows it partly in and partly out. Uh, I can't believe that's what the town intended. Um, the town probably didn't intend to include it in the highway business district. Um, it's a residential property. It has been for a long time. That's the way it's been used. Um, there's no nothing in the record that suggests that when the highway business district was created, uh, it was intended to include this particular property. So it's probably just a, a script, what we call a scrivener's error. Um, and um, there's no real, there's no real uh, land use planning or planning reason to keep it in this district. So we're asking that the board uh, report favorably to town meeting that it be removed from the district by amending the zoning map. And, uh, and if town meeting passes it by two thirds, um, then the uh, map will be amended. Well, I can tell you as the, as the author of the, high, the zoning bylaw for the highway business district, it certainly wasn't intended to have your property in there. Um, I don't know how it got on the map that way, but it certainly uh, that was in, definitely an error. So, I mean, I read your document. Really your your property? I could have saved you money. Like that that was a bit. Yeah. Um, I don't see any issue with it. What? No, I, we just support it at the town at, at the. Yeah, end. we just make a recommendation. Yeah, well, we, we got to approve it here tonight. Yeah. And uh, then we'll make a recommendation. At I make a motion as long as everybody has it, doesn't have any issues in the it's, audience. It's only your pro your property, right, Eric? Correct. You need the public to have a chance to. Yeah, I yeah, got yeah, it. Just, just, any uh, issues? No. no. All right. Any issues on? Uh, any questions from the community? So the only question I have. It doesn't appear that. Does this affect any of the setbacks for what we've already approved for other projects? No, because I think it was, you know, 
if we looked at uh, past uh, issues with the property, I think we believe that it was outside the commercial. But I mean, there's nothing there other than so even the like don't want to shoot us out in the foot. Yeah, the setback would have been the same. Correct. Well, twenty like the twenty, the one down behind Gasco. Yeah. That's all the same. That's all the lines are all the same. That was already yeah. business anyway. And the issue you had with 35 or Eric had or whoever had was the use, not the. Right. right. That doesn't change. It's specifically about the setback. I, I think we all believed at that time that your property was outside the commercial district at, at that point anyway. So I don't think it's going to change anything relative to that. But yeah, no, it. Uh, I have no issue with uh, supporting it. So I make a motion to uh, support this at town meeting. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank We're you for hearing us. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, hopefully, I will be there to make the recommendation at town floor. Not, I, I will try to do that. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, I'll, I'll be in touch with you. You better be there. Okay. And last but not least. And last but not least, we have the public hearing for the zoning overlay district. Let's see who's here. Uh, I am. Okay. <laughs> you like that, don't yeah. you? I'm trying to uh, figure out which background I'm supposed to be using. Same one. Yeah, same one. Oh. The one you started with. This one. <laughs> Do we have any uh, documents on this? Yeah, yeah. I need the same one. Both of them. Oh. Oh, this is. A, oh, this is just uh, Eric's. Oh. Yeah. All right. Jack, you got another one over there? No, it's the, it's, that's in there, isn't it? No. Oh, I apologize. Here. No. The, the meeting, the notice. There it is. Oh, there it is. I I thought they were the same. They both. Um, no, no. Yeah, I there, money. there we go. All right, now we got it. Now we're good. Okay. So we're gonna open the public hearing. According to MGL section forty-eight, section five, uh, notice is hereby given that the plan minute plan board will hold a public hearing on our April twenty-second, twenty twenty-four, at six p.m. in Menin Town Hall to discuss an amendment to the zoning bylaw and zoning map. For the actual fire protection overlay district to be voted on at annual town meeting. A copy of the proposed warrant article may be reviewed at the office of the planning board. And this is in the daily news on 4 5 and 4 12. Okay. Well, I can, uh, I think the best way to start is as you know, towns receive numerous grants and, and earmarks from the state legislators to take a hard look at what kind of what the possibility of a public water supply could be in town eventually maybe not tomorrow but 50 years ago. and in doing so it was we curiously found that the aquifer that's under Menden is in this map which means that a good two-thirds of the town the ones that aren't on Hopedale water are yeah, utilizing this aquifer. And this. we are strongly urged by DEP to have an aquifer protection bylaw so that we don't allow bad stuff to happen in this aquifer, which will affect everybody in this blue area, as well as any public water supply that you may get <laughs> who knows how many years? Um, and let me find. I'm not good at this. Where's Eric when I need him? Um, <laughs> I want to. I want to get rid of this. So you're already sharing this. Yeah. I want to stop. Okay. So mouse up here and stop sharing. Yeah. There. Go to my thing. Then click on it. Where's my one? Should I get off the fur in there? It's not. Hold on. We've got it.
there it is. That's what I want to share. You're going to be a big ass up to me. <laughs> uh, is it this one? No. What was it called? It's the groundwater. There it is. Groundwater protection. Yep. Okay. Might be because. More protection there it is. All right. So the purpose is to promote health, safety, and welfare. We talk about that all the time. And I think the most important thing to highlight is what we are no longer going to allow. Now, as you know, in zoning, any of these uses that are in existence now would be grandfather. Um, but what we are, we're going to allow soil con conservation of soil, water, food, wildlife, outdoor recreation, horse paths, bicycles, um, maintenance of water bodies, dams, etc., residential development, farming, gardening, etc., construction, maintenance, repair of water supplies and any use that's in the underlying district. And most of this uh, on the map is rural residential. There's some commercial. What we uh, are. Yeah, I mean, I'm reading. This is the first time I've had to digest this thing. What we are asking to prohibit are landfills and open dumps, automobile graveyards or junkyards, Landfills receiving only wastewater residuals. Um, facilities that generate, treat, store, or dispose of hazardous waste in certain quantities. Pet petroleum fuel, uh, heating oil bulk, bulk stations. Storage of liquid hazardous materials. Storage of sludge and septic. Storage of de-icing. Storage of animal manure, unless it's within a structure, and, and, and there's language in here about it being on a, a in an agricultural use, and storage of commercial fertilizers. You get the gist. These are the the things that will contaminate everyone's wells, and um, your whoever has a well is going to pay the price. And I think it's makes a lot of sense to get a handle on this. And your Menden is a little late in the game. Mostly every community I've ever worked in has a bylaw like this. This is state verbiage, DEP approved. Uh, I, we haven't offered anything uh, because we didn't think there should be. So if somebody has a couple of horses and they have horse manure on the site, you're not talking about, you're talking about large capacity. Right. And it, they're agriculturally exempt anyway. Well, I guess if you, uh, we also did an overlay as best as we could on existing uses. And uh, there's also restriction that gas stations have to comply with. Uh, current standards. Oh, there's more stockpiling of snow and ice. Earth removal consider um, can't earth removal or any other earth removal to within four feet of a historically high groundwater treatment of disposal works. And then there's three uses that we had allowed by special permit. Um, enlargement uh, or alteration of existing uses that do not conform to the district. So if I was at one of these uses in the district and I wanted to expand it, I'm legal because I'm grandfather. I wanted to expand it, it would have to come here for permission. Um, except as prohibited under section seven activities that involve the handling of toxic or hazardous materials and any rendering impervious any lot more than 15 percent or 25 2500 feet 
whichever is greater unless artificial recharge that will not degrade water quality. Um, there was an issue about gas stations that came up. I don't see it in here. I haven't read this in a while, obviously. I'll, I will before town meeting, but I believe gas stations, and, oh, maybe that's the storage of hazardous material because it's gas. Um, if they comply with current standards, they could locate in here. Yeah, my only concern about this entire bylaw is it's going to be conflicting with current bylaws that we already have, like the um, the gas station bylaw. Specific there's bylaw. All, in this district, there's only one gas station okay. on Cape Road. Um, they, if they're grandfathered and if they wanted to go back to the expand, yeah. they would have to um, adhere to current standards anyway and put the tertiary tanks in and all that anyway. No matter what, they got to do that anyway. Right. right. Yeah. What's this map that we have here? That's for that's the aquifer map. It's just not as fancy as the one I had. Yeah, because I can't make heads or tails out of this map. <laughs> All right. See if I can get this right, Eric. I don't get up. <laughs> I just want to know if you have any more puzzles up. No, I only had like four. There. There's a question whether the gas station at the corner of North. Oh, no, I think it is. Huh? North and um, Milford not, is yeah. in this district or not, but it looks like it might be. What gas needs to be more of it? That's not a gas station. Not anymore. It used to be. Yeah. Totally down the one road's the only one in, in this district. Uh, the one on uh, the building right now, currently, on half That Avenue. would be in it. That's and they'd have, now they have to comply with uh, DEP standards. No, Imperial's not on it. You can see. This is. Uh, 16 and they would be in this white part. I'll do, I will. I mean, I don't see any, I don't see anything that that would cause major pain for the town. I, I get that. I, I get a little concerned when the words uh, seepage and septic. Uh, I mean, but. What, for sludge plant? No, no, just no, for sludge plant, obviously, but I'm more, you know. There's nothing in there about um, septic systems, uh, unless it's a commercial septic system. I don't say, I, I, you know, <clears throat> guys have any questions? I promise by a town meeting I'll be better versed at this, not rush, but. I think it makes sense. Um, you know, we're getting closer to to finding a good, solid public water source for the future, and this will help protect that too. Besides all the houses and water. yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, is there ever going to be any enough money to actually put in a water system? I mean, we're not going to ever. I won't ever see it. You won't ever see it. But and there's but cost it's a good living. idea uh, to protect. <laughs> you protect it, yes. I'm just saying. Yeah. You know, yeah. back in private wells too. Yeah. Yes, and we we've, we've had this discussion quite a bit uh, with our engineer. We don't know what's going to happen in 50, 75, or even right. 100 mm -hmm. years. There might be state, federal government saying you're putting a water system in there. With I, I don't think, I, to be honest with you, I don't think it'll be that long. Um, oh, it's okay. more and more contaminated water and men showing up and continues, mm -hmm. um, you know, and it, the various men and that need it around the lake certainly needs it. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, the lake's not even in this aquifer. No, no, but they have enough water problems over there. Um, I mean, I guess that I don't want to. I don't know if the community has any input. Uh, Jack, you said uh, that it would apply to any um, any existing uses that were then expanding. 
What about an instance where a gas station isn't expanding, but is like replacing existing equipment? Would, it, would they need to conform? I think they conform to state. They would have to conform yeah. with DEP. They wouldn't DEP, have to yeah. conform with zoning. It's a nuance, but okay. they would end up in the same place. Yeah, no matter what, they have the regulation. They have the strict regulations. Anyway. Oh, there is yeah. DEP's regulation on gas stations. It's crazy. The tanks are like the one that's going on here. He's building, he has to build state of the art tank protector. Yeah. Right. Which is easily in this. Isabella? Yeah, there is, Jack. We were planning to meet with the Agricultural Commission about the stockpiling. I don't know if you've gotten. We did reach out. They're a little difficult. I think they're dormant for the most part. Mm -hmm. Dylan had a discussion with a member, you guys, a woman, I don't remember. I mean, from the Cultural Commission, and like she just couldn't ever. get the Agricultural Commission together. I will tell you though. Um, previously in my career, I worked in Carver. Carver's an agricultural community uh, town. It's actually bigger than the men, and it's about thirteen thousand people, but it's all cranberry. Big gas stations, and this has been adopted there. And the agricultural commission is in favor. Yeah, I don't. I don't think. But, I mean, it, it, a contaminated. You know what? The, would be a pretty bad thing. The agricultural community has its own protection. Yeah, it's okay with so I can't see them being. Twenty-five. Meeting again, it would probably be a valid question. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, believe me, the Agricultural Commission, I'm sure, has been all over this. Uh, when when uh, they, the farm bylaw came in place, we had took us like uh, three town meetings to get through that. So uh, we would have heard from them by now. Yeah, agricultural exemptions are very strong. Yeah. Court case after court case is protected. Yeah, the right to farm bylaw is pretty. We'll support this and move on. Yeah, he's telling the enforcement officer, so if it's a bylaw, then it's the cops out here. <clears throat> Bill. We didn't discuss the site visit before for 45. Uh, Do we um, 49 get a vote for the not on the agenda? Right. I think that we're just going to go to uh, address it. It wasn't going to be a public hearing. It's not. You, yeah, yeah, does anybody I'd like the one thing at a time? Vote. Does anybody have any issues? Okay. Yeah, everybody's good. Audience. Uh, so we're going to vote to support this. Well, no, we have to vote to approve this. No, just support it at town meeting. That's it. Just to support it. Or you could call Ghostbusters and ask. So do we want to, we're going to vote to support this at town meeting. Basically, just like we did with the last one. Well, this, this has to be approved in the Bible. Now or? Yeah. It's only for zoning. So it's not just a recommendation at town floor. This is how we're going to approve the address to zoning bill. It's going to be section 5.06. That's uh, so this isn't just okay. Hey, okay, at the town meeting. This is do we want to add this to the zoning bill? I think we should. Yeah, I think we should. Okay, I make a motion to approve 5.06 groundwater protection protection district and map. Need a second though. Second. Okay. All those in favor. Aye. Thanks. Opposed. Yeah. Nobody. Good. So that is good. So we can uh, make the recommendation, Council. Are you going to write the recommendations, or you want me? Oh, good. Well, good. I've done enough of them. Yeah, I'll find out from you which one's going to be there. Well, see, at the time, if Bill's going to be there, it's fine. I'll probably be there either way. But yeah. Um. Well. If something occurs that I can't be there, I'll let yeah, you guys I mean, know. I guess. He's better up there than me. 
but uh, I think we've dispensed of the entire agenda tonight. Let me just be sure. Make a motion to adjourn. Uh, hold on one second. Okay. Isabella, were you intending on talking about 45? I mean, I let Jeff go. I really, it wasn't on the agenda for tonight, so. Uh, the next yeah. meeting we'll have you if you want to come. I'll put it on the agenda. We weren't even going to put it on the agenda. Remember, we just made a thing that he was going to deal with John. Yeah, I mean, you're going to deal with, you're going to be. Yeah. But what's going to be on the agenda? Just. Well, well funny the uh, Oxbridge Street. If yeah, forty-five Oxbridge. Then you got to modify the um, storm order. Right. That's yeah. Just right. Yeah, I think we they would be going to rerun the, the results. Um, yeah, okay. so we'll reserve questions and comments for the next meeting. Yeah, for the next meeting. Okay. Next meeting is the sixth. Sounds good. Well, why don't we just have a on the thirteenth? Right. So I get to go off. Right. Brendan, uh, something was, I was supposed to be like a uh, liaison from the select board to, to communicate between the boards. Is that you? It's me. Okay, no. good. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was supposed to be. Um... Yeah, the, uh, I forget his name. Bug me <laughs> No, you have bugs. Actually, no, we. That's good. I appreciate it. Yeah, no, let's. I didn't it. know if you were here for, because you lived here in a butter or if you were here for. Uh, we are having a, um, we are, are having CM, I got a grant from CMRPC. A motion to adjourn, the... right? I made a motion. Okay. Second. Aye. 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 To adjourn. Yeah. Excellent. Oh, 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 yeah. You guys go home. Thank you. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, so I got a $50,000 grant from uh, CMRPC to rewrite the zoning bylaws. Bring Menden's bylaws up to this. Uh, I, 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 I like to be. 